Sometimes I wonder why I even bother. <laughs> Is there something else I could have done with the two and a half, three hours I spent tonight watching a hockey game? Probably, but I torture myself anyways. Oh, what a fucking game. For the second time this week, the Leafs lost to Vancouver in Vancouver. And tonight's game was much like the previous one. Uh, they pretty much had the advantage in all the statistical categories. They looked like the better team for a lot of the night, yet somehow fall. And this one wasn't even, um, you know, scraping out a point in overtime. This was 6-3. You know, this was, uh, uh, it was ugly. Um, and there was lots of weird stuff going on going into the game. Um, well, maybe not lots of weird stuff, but uh, Hyman, who took a knee on knee in the last game against Vancouver, is going to be out at least two weeks with a sprained MCL. So he didn't tear anything or whatever, it's just sprained. So that's good news, um, That because it could have been a lot worse. So he was out of the lineup. And then I heard on the sports uh, highlights this morning that Nylander was going to be scratch tonight because he was late for a team meeting or something like that so he wasn't going to be in the lineup but he eventually ended up being in the lineup tonight um i think they said fuck it he had a good game last game and we need to win a game right so they probably just let him play or whatever um but then mikhaev wasn't in the lineup so hyman wasn't in the lineup mikhaev wasn't in the lineup so they uh put angball back in who missed the last game and uh, they uh, also brought up uh, or called in Adam Brooks, who this was his third game of the season. So, And then on the defensive end, uh, Dermott wasn't playing for some reason. I don't know if that's injury or uh, maintenance day, whatever. Uh, so Rasmus Sandin was in the lineup, and I don't know if he's played a game for them yet this year or not. Um, so, so some serious lineup changes, um, and uh, the, the defensive pairs were jumbled a bit again. Uh, they had... Uh, split uh riley and brody up and muzzin and hall again and, and paired them off with the others and uh so then that, that left bogosian and sandine on on the third pairing in terms of the lines it was the usual first line uh marner uh, marner matthews and galchenyuk the second line Tavares, nylander and kerfoot um and then there was uh spezzo with robertson and brooks uh, so a couple young guys with uh, a, a big veteran. And then it was um, uh, Thornton, Simmons, and Engvall as uh, the fourth line there. So on this night, it was really the second line, Tavares's line, that really, really showed a lot of jump. Nylander was all over the place. Johnny T was all over the place. And Kerfoot, Kerfoot was good in supporting those two. Um, and they were really the line that carried uh, them through that game, or at least the first two periods in a bit um and uh they got on the board first the Leafs scored first um the first period was uh very fast paced uh lots of lots of back and forth action a quick pace uh just before the halfway point of the period Vancouver really started to take an advantage and had a lot of shifts in the Leafs zone and were grinding them down a bit um but then the Leafs kind of struck back uh, and, and took back over, and then Tavares would eventually, um, I think it was later in the period after after they took back over again. I can't remember exactly, but uh, it was um, it was some good work by Nylander. He uh, and Tavares, I guess there was a there, there was a turnover in the neutral zone, and and and, uh, and Nylander was able to receive the puck and then fly down the left wing. And uh, the defenseman Myers, he kind of stumbled, so Nylander just went around. He got a shot. He tried for his own rebound, but couldn't uh, make a play on it. So he took the puck back around the net, went around the other side, and just uh, shoveled it out uh, to Tavares, who had seen this developing, took a beeline to the net, just stuck out his stick, and there it was in the back of the net. So one nothing Leafs uh, going into the second period, and they had really built some momentum in that back uh, kind of five six seven minutes of that first period after they kind of turned aside that momentum Vancouver had gained uh, around the halfway point so um, going into the second period the Leafs uh, quickly found themselves down two to one as Vancouver would score the first two goals of the second period I think these first two were okay um, 
I can't remember who had the first one. Um, it doesn't matter. It's Vancouver's goals. I really don't give a shit. Um, and then Quinn Hughes had the second one, and it hit a stick and, and changed direction on Riddick um, and fooled him. Uh, oh, yeah, and Riddick got the start because of Campbell. Last game was a little iffy. Um, so they were down 2-1. However, the period would continue to evolve. Um, the Leafs were taking control again, and they were able to get on the board again. And yay, yay, power play goal. Uh, it took it took until the final you know stages of the power play, but they finally they had worked it around. They had a lot of zone time on this power play. They were pretty much in the zone the whole time, <clears throat> but the, but the puck movement was very deliberate and slow. Um, it wasn't like whipping it around like they they do when they're flowing and, and they're and they're not squeezing the sticks and they're and they're just rolling as normal. It's it's really fast puck movement, but this was more deliberate and uh, and slower. But uh, eventually, after they just kept passing and and, <clears throat> and didn't manage to get any shots, uh, I came to Tavares on the left wing and he just said, fuck it. Uh, there was some good traffic in front of the net and he just wristed one short side on uh, Holpe past the blocker and uh, tied things up at two so um, they were able to drag themselves back into it after getting down 2-1 and we headed to the thir third period uh, uh, tied at two so all things still overall looking pretty good and what happens to start the third shorthanded Marner and <clears throat> Kerfoot cause a ruckus in the Vancouver end uh, get, get the Canucks chasing them and Marner was able to, to <clears throat> uh, manage to put the puck out front to Brooks, who, who was streaking in towards the net, and he had the easiest tap in you'll ever see. 3-2, Leafs score a power play goal, a shorty, uh, relinquish a lead, but managed to drag themselves back in. 3-2 in the early stages of the third, you think, no problem. Until Vancouver scores four straight fucking goals. And a lot of them were not good. Oh, boy. Riddick was looking pretty average, let's say. <laughs> uh, one went five hole, shouldn't have gone. I don't even remember the rest, but I remember going, what the fuck? Like, I, I started kind of <clears throat> tuning out of the game in the third period because it's just like, you know, you see this team have a really good start to this season and seem like they're learning. And then they hit these skids where it's like, maybe they didn't learn. But then you look at their performance, and it's like, Jesus, they're outplaying these guys. They're pretty much ahead in every statistical category. But then the goalie fucking lets them down, right? Or, or they make one too many turn turnovers at the wrong time, and it just they end up paying the price for it, right? It's like, it's just like they literally cannot win these days, right? So... Um, it just gets to be a bit frustrating because they're better, they're a lot better than the results they've been getting lately, right? So, um, yeah, the last goal, the sixth goal, was an empty netter. Actually, maybe the two, last two goals oh, were empty netters. Maybe not, I don't remember. Like I said, I was tuning out. But, uh, you know, once it got to, uh, once they gave up the lead and it got to 4-3 in the third and I saw some of the goals that were going in, I was just like, oh, fuck, they're not going to win this game, you know? It's like... Um, you can just tell, right? There comes a point where it's like, no, they they don't have it. They're not going to get it. Even if they fucking get one here with the goalie pulled, something's going to go wrong. They're going to give up another softie or whatever, right? Um, so, yeah, I think the major problem tonight was the goaltending. Riddick did not look good. And, uh, you know, considering he played well in his first start and, and Campbell had that really good run, but they've both kind of struggled the last couple games. Um, so that's not good because you need reliable goaltending to win in the NHL. Um, so yeah, but like I said, just like the game before it, uh, they led in shots by a fair amount. Vancouver had to block a few more shots. The Leafs even out hit them. They didn't win the face-off battle, which is unusual because they usually do. They're a good face-off team. But that was really the only category they, they, they were beat in, right? Just like just like the last game. They... they were tops in the categories for the most part in that game too they just a weak goal here or there whatever and and they go down so i'm not sure what to think um 
I, I do, I've said this before, I like it when a team goes through a bit of adversity during the regular season, not at the end of the regular season as you're approaching the playoffs because it's nice, it's nice to get a little bit of confidence and a little bit of normality and, and a little bit of swagger into your game before you go into the playoffs. It's not good to be slumping as you go into the playoffs, but it's nice to have this adversity at a couple different points during the season uh, because a team needs to know how to fight through that and, 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 uh, and deal with that because the playoffs is all about quick changes in momentum and in a game every other night and you got to be ready and, and you got to learn from your mistakes but also put it behind you so that you can get on and not dwell on it and you know if you lose this game go out and win the fucking next one right so um so i don't see toronto losing games at this point as necessarily a bad thing in terms of helping them learn you know to uh learn from their mistakes and learn what they have to do to win and, and be consistent right so um but uh, that being said winnipeg's sniffing only three four points behind them right now and uh and there's only i don't know 10 11 12 games to go so it's it's getting into those the latter stages of the, of the, of the season so um you know they got to start winning now so they got winnipeg thursday night which will be a tough game um uh but they got to start getting back into the positive column now so uh bright the bright side their reinforcements that had to quarantine because they were traded from the states should uh i think they were saying that they should be with the leafs for that game and win against winnipeg thursday night so um that means felino is going to be in for sure uh the other guys i don't know where they're going to fit into the lineup or if they're going to play at all like hutton and uh I, I don't think riley nash is ready to play yet but uh and then the other guy they got for Barabanov uh, from San Jose, I don't know if those guys are going to be playing, but Felino for sure will be in the lineup, but uh, I don't know about the other guys, but uh, they at least have some bodies coming, which is good because, um, you know, like I said, Hyman uh, is out for a couple weeks. I don't know what was wrong with Mikheyev because he wasn't in the lineup. Dermot was out tonight, and then, oh yeah, and then Bogosian. Uh, you know, this Leaf defensive core has been so reliable and and just playing every game together same pair consistent and then uh and then recently they haven't been playing as well Keith has been messing with the pairings Dermot didn't play tonight and then tonight uh, Bogosian was just going to retrieve a puck in the corner in, of his own zone and he kind of I don't I mean, it's like he tripped over his own skates or something and he went all wonky and he went into the boards like knees first almost right with one leg under him and uh he got up under his own power and, and, and left, but he never came back, right? So um, hopefully that's nothing too long-term either, but there's another guy down, right? So um, it's been a weird year for injuries, like so many goalie injuries, and then you've had a few superstars go down for little stretches at a time, and then uh, and then these other ones that are cropping up now. So um, these reinforcements they're getting are, you know, kind of coming at the perfect time, right? So. Um, we'll see what happens on Thursday. I can't wait to see <clears throat> uh, if if Mikheyev and Dermot are back or, or not to see how they do the lines with uh, Felino in and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens on Thursday night. And hopefully I will have better goddamn news this time. Gah!